welcome again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 7, Part 4, Procedures. In this episode, I'm going to combine the diagnostic procedures and the treatment procedures. And really, there are not a a lot of terms to go over here. It's sort of a motley assortment of terms that just, I think, are either presented in a confusing way in the textbook, or again, I find that students often find them confusing. So I'm going to go over those all with you. First of all, let's look at procedures that are diagnostic in nature. The first term is peak flow meter. A peak flow meter is a small handheld device that's used by asthmatics to test how quickly they can expel air from their lungs. And it's meant to help them monitor their condition and if they notice a change they may need to make an adjustment in their medication or just be wary that uh, an asthma attack could be upcoming. The next term is spirometer, S-P-I-R-O-M-E-T-E-R, and this is used in pulmonary function tests. Now, when we're doing pulmonary function tests, we're trying to evaluate what type of pulmonary disorder, if any, that a patient has. So this is a more involved process and it's it's more general than say the peak flow meter. An asthmatic knows they're asthmatic, they're using their peak flow meter. But spirometer is a tool used to perform a variety of tests just to find out what is going on. And it involves a tight fitting mouthpiece that the patient <laughs> blows into to measure the volume of air that they can breathe in and out. Tests can also be done to determine um, the velocity of the air. And the third diagnostic tool is a pulse oximeter, P-U-L-S-E-O-X-I-M-E-T-E-R. And this is a little clip-on device, it clips on the finger, and this measures the oxygen saturation level in the blood. Next we have a term that refers to a sleep study, and this is kind of a tricky one to say and spell. It's polysomnography. Polysomnography. P-O-L-Y-S-O-M-N-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y. And this is done in order to evaluate how well someone sleeps, and it can be done to diagnose the sleep apnea. And some of you may actually be interested in polysomnography because here at JCCC we do have a program in that. So some of you may actually be going into that. Now we have two terms for procedures that are a little tricky in terms of spelling. And these relate to the chest. Do you remember the word part that refers to chest? And let's think of the combining form. Well, that's thoraco, T-H-O-R-A-C slash O. That's the combining form that refers to chest. And we've got a couple terms here I want to review with you related to that. First of all, we have the term thoracostomy, T-H-O-R-A-C-O-S-T-O-M-Y, thoracostomy. And that would be an incision into and the creation of a permanent opening into the chest. Remember the suffix ostomy means to create a permanent opening. The second term is thoracentesis. And this one is tricky to spell because it does not follow the rules. It's spelled T-H-O-R-A-C E-N-T-E-S-I-S. Now, the combining form again for chest is thoraco, T 
T-H-O-R-A-C slash O. The suffix centesis is C-E-N-T-E-S-I-S. Now, following our rules, we would drop the slash O, but we'd think there would be a C in there, and that would create a double C normally. T-H-O-R-A-C, C-E-N-T-S-I-S. Well, that's not too pretty, and so this, this term does not follow the rules. We actually drop the C and the O in Thorico, so we only have one C. So it's Thoracentesis, T-H-O-R-A-C-E-N-T-E-S. Well, and based on the word parts here, what do you think thoracentesis would mean? Well, I hope you remember that centesis means the withdrawal of fluid. So thoracentesis would be the procedure of withdrawing of fluid from the chest. Okay, and then we have two more procedures that are very easily confused. I'm always asked questions about this because it's often not clear what the difference is. We have tracheotomy and tracheostomy. Tracheotomy is T-R-A-C-H-E-O-T-O-M-Y. And based on the word parts, what is a tracheotomy? Well, a tracheotomy would be an incision into the trachea. Because otomy means incision into or making an incision. Well, a tracheotomy is an emergency procedure where an incision is made into the trachea in order to make an airway. This would be an emergency procedure where if someone uh, had a blockage, maybe their throat is swollen up, you know, it could be a variety of things, but they're, they need to establish an airway quickly because someone is asphyxiating. So that would be an emergency treatment, tracheotomy. We also have tracheostomy, T-R-A-C-H-E-O-S-T-O-M-Y. And again, based on the word parts, what is a tracheostomy? Well, that would be making an incision into the trachea, but for the purpose of making a permanent opening. A tracheostomy also is to provide an airway, but the difference is it's going to be for a longer term. We're surgically creating a permanent opening into the trachea because for whatever reason, for a long period of time, a patient is going to need that permanent airway bypass. So tracheostomy is going to be a longer-term procedure. It's going to be a permanent opening. A tracheotomy is an emergency procedure. It's going to be a quick and dirty cut and opening into the trachea so that someone can get air quickly. And then finally, that leads us to two more terms, which are really confusing the way they're presented in the textbook, and that is the terms ventilator and respirator. And the explanations in the book really are not clear, so I'm going to try to clarify that. First of all, let's go back and review the term respiration. And I know the textbook used to cover this. Respiration refers to the exchange of gases, particularly the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. There's two types of respiration. There's the internal respiration and the external respiration. Now, external respiration is when you have the air exchange between the environment and the body, and that really happens in the alveoli. That's where the air coming into the lungs exchanges with the blood in the body, and the blood gives up its carbon dioxide and it takes in the oxygen. Internal respiration also refers to the exchange of gases, but that happens at the cellular level. This is where the blood will give up its oxygen to the cells, and the cells will 
send their carbon dioxide back to the blood. So respiration refers to the exchange of gases. In the textbook, when they're talking about ventilator and respirator, we're talking about life support devices that are providing oxygen to the patient. We're not talking about exchange of gases because that happens within the body. You can't do that really with the device. So technically, respirator is not a real term, at least in the medical sense. It really is not used anymore. Respirator really refers to a protective device that is used to protect someone from, say, paint fumes, solvents, other dangerous chemicals. And it's like a little mask you wear that has filter cartridges in it. It's not a medical device. Ventilator is really the preferred term for a medical device that's going to provide life support to a patient who can't breathe on his or her own. And what the ventilator does is it forces air in and out of the patient's lungs. That is ventilation, not respiration. Respiration is the exchange of gases. And that's not happening with ventilation. All you're doing with ventilation is you're pushing air in and out of the body. So ventilator is the preferred term for the life support device that enables patients to breathe who can't breathe on their own. A respirator is not a medical device. It, again, is a protective device, an occupational device. You use it to protect yourself from fumes, such as painting or glue solvents or whatever you might be working with. So that's something to watch out for because uh, the book really doesn't do a good job there. Ventilator is the preferred term for life support. Respirator is used incorrectly to mean the same thing. In a medical context, if someone says respirator, they're really meaning a ventilator. So I hope that clarifies that. They're really interchangeable terms, although it's more correct to use ventilator. Okay, well let's do a little bit of practice here with these terms. First of all, what is the device that would be used in pulmonary function tests to measure the volume of air that a patient can breathe in and out? Well, that would be the spirometer. S-P-I-R-O-M-E-T-E-R. And what is the medical term for a sleep study? Well, that's polysomnography. P-O-L-Y-S-O-M-N-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y. And what is the term for the emergency procedure in which an incision is made into the trachea to establish an airway? Well, that's a tracheotomy. T-R-A-C-H-E-O-T-O-M-Y. And what is the term for the device used by asthmatics to test how quickly they can expel air from their lungs? That's a peak flow meter. P-E-A-K-F-L-O-W-M-E-T-E-R. And what is the term that refers to the exchange of gases in the body? That's respiration, R-E-S-P-I-R-A-T-I-O-N. What is the term for the exchange of air between the environment and the body. Well, that's the external respiration. E-X-T-E-R-N-A-L, external, and then respiration, R-E-S-P-I-R-A-T-I-O-N. What is the preferred term for a medical device that provides life support to a patient who cannot breathe on his or her own 
by forcing air in and out of the patient's lungs. The preferred term is ventilator, V-E-N-T-I-L-A-T-O-R. What is the term for the device that measures oxygen saturation level in the blood? That's a pulse oximeter, P-U-L-S-E. O-X-I-M-E-T-E-R. What is the term for the withdrawal of fluid from the chest? That's thoracentesis. T-H-O-R-A-C-E-N-T-E-S-I-S. What is the term for the exchange of gases between the blood and the cells. That's internal respiration. I-N-T-E-R-N-A-L respiration R-E-S-P-I-R-A-T-I-O-N and what is the term that refers to a device that filters air to prevent exposure to harmful chemicals such as paint fumes? This term is often misused to refer to a life support device. That's respirator. R-E-S-P-I-R-A-T-O-R. And what is the term that means or refers to a medical procedure where a permanent opening is made into the chest? That's a thoracostomy, T-H-O-R-A-C-O-S-T-O-M-Y. Okay, well that covers it for the procedures, and this gets us to the end of chapter 7. As I said at the beginning, it's not as intense as the earlier chapters we've done. And so, good luck to you as you finish your studies and take your test. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast. <music>